Oh, you want to be a farmer. Well, see all that wood behind there? That's well over a ton. Uh, I would estimate that to be about probably one and a half tons, something like that. And all of that was moved by yours truly, with a little help from my oldest daughter, and came from down there. There. I'll probably turn this the other way around now, but see you can see like a bit of the thing, a bit of trunk there, and uh, that's basically it. It's uh, from down there where you see those, let me see like there, see where my finger's pointing, that and that, it's two bunches of them. Anyway, that's where the tree trunks came from, and some of these things... So you learn all sorts of fascinating stuff. For example, this guy, which was a bit longer than that before I started chopping into it, about this kind of length, like that one there. Um, well, those things, you end up flipping end over end to take it up the hill. So um, I now know why those uh, Scottish guys that do that, like, you know, log throw or whatever. I know where that comes from now. And I hope I don't get to find out where the catering the huge big stones comes from because uh, I've got one huge big stone right next to the door of our house and uh, kind of hoping that that's the only one I'll ever need. <laughs> so yeah, uh, this was also done at 8 at night so it was uh, very interesting carrying the stuff in the dark. But um, yeah, so if you want to be a farmer, that's the kind of stuff you've got to do, just so you know. All right, so, of course the beauty the beauty of carrying up huge logs is that afterwards you've got to cut them too and this is, this is just the second load and the smaller load than the one I've already brought up and cut so, uh, I can entertain you by uh, letting you watch somebody work and uh, start with an easy one, the ones that are like that are not, are not too deep, it's quite easy and the thicker ones or the longer ones, whichever way you want to call it they are uh, a bit more difficult so uh, let me just adjust this a bit uh, there you go I don't know if you'll get the full x-ring in there but I'm close enough so as I was saying these ones are quite easy you can and they are very nicely dry so they break easy and this is all our wood. Now, of course, this job I don't enjoy so much. It looks fun for about the first 20 minutes. <laughs> but when you're on day 27 of it... <laughs> uh, last year I was lucky because... Um, the old man, the, my neighbor, that unfortunately passed away. Uh, he saved our ass because in winter, if you recall, in January I was in bed with COVID and recovering from that was no joke either so I, uh, I had done a little bit of wood but I didn't I hadn't had enough time to uh, to get it right so thank God he had a lot of wood there and his son said just take as much as you need and that's what so us through the winter really this winter I uh, managed to cut just enough wood just in time I bought some as well uh, but this one the one that we cut now hopefully will see us through but of course this process has to be done now this is one of the long ones this is gonna take a proper swing to cut through so enjoy Try not to hit the roof either. Yeah.
and uh, it looks simple but you know you can miss if you don't judge it right and if you miss this then you'll hit the ground on your own toes if you're not careful or whatever I don't have any coordination issues so I'm generally okay with this sort of thing but I know a guy who uh, <laughs> slashed a few tendons in his hand with a machete um, and you see the gardening sort of guy, you know, he's much better farmer than I am. And if you're wondering what this cable is, this is the thing I used to clear my stovepipe when it got clogged with soot. Because the wood that I bought was wet. And I'm like, you know, this wood has been in the forest for years. But, uh, it's, uh, was sort of mostly off the ground and I don't know if you can see that but this is really nice dried wood and this burns really well it's also dense so this takes a while to burn and it's not um, immediately burnt through like some of the lighter woods this would be pretty ideal wood for the gasifier Sometimes if you haven't cut it flat, you kind of have to cut it on the on the corner sort of thing. Hmm. And this probably won't go through all the way. Yeah. Now screw it, it's big enough to burn. So, uh, all you people out there thinking, I want to be a farmer, it's a hard life. <laughs> Mind you, I certainly prefer this to like 13 hours in an office. No doubt about that. Okay, this is going to be a, an awkward one, so that's going to go in full size. Once I got a decent fire going. Last one. <sighs> Cutting this type of wood quite small is better because uh, it burns so slowly and so well that if you need a bit of air between bits, it performs really nicely. So this kind of thing is good after you've just started the fire to like put one of them on and it'll keep the rest going. 
That's about it. Always keep your act in a safe position. And these bits are the right size anyway. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen, for this edition of Woodcutting 101.